Okay, <clears throat> here's my plan for you. What I'd like to do, because next time you're rough drafting to do, and we have talked about this, I think for at least the past two classes, this paper is in a way barely qualifies as what you could call a paper, right? Given the stipulations I've been handed, that I've been handed to you, three paragraphs max, right? This is an in-class essay that fortunately, I think, you have a lot of time to work on considering what I'm asking you to produce, right? So all that said, what I wanted to do for the first bit today, which would be, I'll be honest with you, pretty boring, but we, we can do it fast, okay? And I wanna to talk to you about how to format this thing, okay? And I thought about this probably too much, but I realized in doing that that I never really considered it as a student. I just sort of did it. And that is to say, if you've ever had like an essay question on a test, you know, they, again, they, they end up being around three paragraphs, something like that, maybe longer. But you just kind of like throw yourself into it. Like there's no, there's barely any thought, if any, to format it, right? So here's what I'm thinking, and you tell me your opinion of this. I think what we need to do for three paragraphs is to start with an introduction. You gotta have one. You have to introduce your ideas. You have to have some kind of a thesis. Like there's no way around that. Right? But then beyond that, your next two paragraphs need to sort of be body paragraphs like we've talked to, uh, uh, like we've described up to this point, right? Your best shot at a topic sentence, some kind of specific evidence, and then analysis of that evidence in support of your argument. That's how every body paragraph should work. The main difference would be, in this case, your body paragraphs, I think, can and probably, unfortunately, should be a little more general. Now what I mean by that is, I do not want to encourage anyone to not focus on details. That's not what I'm saying. No matter what class you're in, you will always impress people by concentrating on the details. I promise you, okay, when it comes to an argument. But, where you would normally have room, like a little more room in a longer introduction, or in even a conclusion, to talk about the sort of applicability of your argument, what I mean by that is, you would have more room in a longer paper to not just dive into details and like really get in the mud there, but then later in the paper say, yeah, all those points I made, they add up to this big thing, right? You're kind of able to do that. In this paper, that's harder to do. So what I'm saying is, your introduction will help a lot here, but then your body paragraphs also may need to be just a little bit wider in terms of their scope, okay? Does that make a little bit of sense? Okay. I'll put it another way. Does that not make any sense at all to anybody? Because that's fine. Okay. What I want to do now then, I sent you guys an email. Uh, ugh. Maybe around 11.30. Numbers are hard for me. I think it was around 11.30. With a student example. If you would, open that up. This is just... Uh, the homework for last time. This is a student's discussion post. Some of you may recognize it. Don't call out the dude. You know, move along, student. You know, try to try to at least pretend it's anonymous. But he took on the question that I say we. I kind of decided last week was going to be our question for this paper. How good a job does the Matrix do as a power fantasy, right? And he takes that on. He takes a couple runs at it. I think in this paragraph. All I want you to do right now, with that question in mind, read this paragraph, we're gonna talk about it. Go for it.
I need more time? Okay. Well, to begin with, I'm assuming this is an easy question, but I guess we'll find out. Where does the student come down on the issue? How good does the matrix do? Wait, did I say that right? How good a job does the matrix do as a power fantasy? What do you think the student's opinion of that is? I thought that was an easy question. Oof. We'll go yes, no. Good. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, at least for the most part, reading this paragraph, I think this student is like sort of enumerating all the ways that the movie works as a power fantasy, right? Let's list some of those real quick. What are some of the ways, they give us a couple, that according to this student, the Matrix fulfills its, its role, goal as a power fantasy? How does it do it? So it's uh, really strange if you get into power, the power fantasy, but it just doesn't make sense to get into it. That's it. We'll talk about it. Let's get them up on the board. But I like at the end, you're like, what? Um, they claim it works because it's not realistic. We'll talk about it. But I heard some, some questioning in your voice. Okay. Yeah, it's all good. That's what we're here for. What else? They give you a couple more. It's basically like, where do they talk about power? Like, how does this guy get power? What does it look like? This, this question of, like, the chosen one. And I feel like, in a way, these are kind of connected, right? Because, again, if you push on it at all, this idea that you could be the chosen one, whatever that might mean, doesn't feel terribly realistic, right? If you were the chosen one, you probably wouldn't be here right now. You'd have, like, a toilet made of gold and whatever, you know. Things would be different, probably. Okay. What else? There's at least one or two more. What about right, right after that business about him being the one? Yeah, there's two more ways this is a power fantasy according to this guy. I don't even know if he realizes it. It's right after we say Neo's the one, and right before that bit about uh, not making sense in the real world is one of them. He doubts himself. Hey man, I don't know about how you feel most of the time. That's about as real as it gets. Doubt? I feel that. Lawrence Fishburne showed up and was like, you are the one. I'd be like, no. Mm-mm. -hmm. Okay. One other pretty uh, big reason here in this paragraph, I think it's towards the end. Yeah, yeah, it's the last sentence. What are we talking about in the last sentence? How he got him. How he got him. What'd you say? Yeah. 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 There's sort of, this is kind of given to him, basically. Like, we see him put in work, but we talked about it, I think, two classes in a row. That work is like. I'll be real with you. I'm gonna go home tonight. I'm gonna put in some some work too. You heard this game called Void Bastards? It's pretty cool. My son likes watching me play it. Blowing up a bunch of aliens. It's pretty great. Yeah. So this notion. Uh, I guess I'll just put work with a slash through it. Nah. It kind of helps, I think, when it comes to planning this sort of thing to get it all just super simply up on the board, right? Or on a sheet of paper for yourself with whatever you were thinking of arguing. Because it can kind of scare you in the face. For instance, our very first point that we got up here 
it works as a power fantasy because it's not realistic. Immediately, I'm like, what? What? So we'll start there. It seems like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like you would say not realistic actually belongs over here. Why? Well, no, it's, it's confusing. No, I know, I know. I don't really necessarily know what the point well, and that, that is, by the way, the problem I'm trying to highlight is we don't really know for most, if maybe any of these, why it's a yes. This student keeps saying Matrix is a power fantasy, the Matrix is a power, like he says it over and over, so we know he feels this way, but he never gives us a why. To have a complete argument, I need that why. All the time. Okay? That's the hard part. That's why it's not here. Okay, that's the argument I would make. But we gotta try to, we're gonna try to figure that out today. But again, one interesting way to do that, I think, is to hit upon the kind of shared reaction. Like, you reacted this way, I reacted this way initially when I read it. I think I heard, like, the reaction when he read it aloud. Some of you are like, yeah, that's weird, I don't get it. So let's go to where we're at. We feel like, ooh, sounds like I'm gonna uh, that should be over here. Why? What is the power's fantasy supposed to do? How might it not be? God, I can't speak. If it's not realistic, why does that mean it, it damages like its credibility as a power fantasy? Take you all the way back to eleven oh one. So this is that point, and it kind of blows me out he's not here. This is Dan Fong's point, right? He said he couldn't relate to the movie. And I've never thought about that before. I don't really relate to it either. I don't think I ever did. I was 13 when it came out. I was the target market. And like, I thought it was really cool. That's why I showed it to you guys. A bunch of crazy shit going on. But like, at no point I'm like, I could, I could be Keanu Reeves in this movie, right? Like, I, no, not really. So the point we're making here on this side, we would argue, and again, this is what's important. We're making an argument now. It's integral, according to our line of logic. You need to be able to relate for it to be a power fantasy, right? Well, so the next question is, if I can write, why? Why is that important to a power fantasy, do you think? Now we're really into argument. The examples we gave last time, when he made that point. Rocky, you're with him, right? Die Hard, I don't know if you're with him as much as Rocky, I mean, I, I'm not sure, but you're, you're with him. Definitely more than you are Neo, right? Why does it, why, why would we claim you you have to be able to relate to the main character in a power fantasy. What's a power fantasy about? I know it was like a week since we talked about this, but like some people have argued, for instance, that the Marvel movies, as good as some of them are are mostly just power fantasies. And that, that's a big reason why they're so successful. What is a power fantasy supposed to do for the audience? Doesn't it put you in that role? Like, yeah. In the movie, like, what do you think about? In the role of what kind of person? Because this is where power comes in. Like, this, like you're Neo. Like you're, you're a you're badass. Like you're the chosen one. Like. Yeah. <clears throat> if it's working, and again, we're sort of saying, at least from this point, that it doesn't because power fantasies. We want to fantasize that we are powerful. That's all that means, okay? And here, we're saying because you can't relate, because who is Neo really? Like outside of being the chosen one, and like once he does all the cool slow-mo uh, kung fu, you don't really know anything about him as a character. Like, he doubts himself a little bit, which is like, okay, I mean, that's good. But, like, 
You don't see his day to day. You see it for a second long enough to establish he has one. And then the rest of the movie is like, look, there's way cooler stuff over here. Don't even worry about that, right? Like it, we're kind of starting to wonder if we don't get to know him as a human being. We only see him as a superhero. If that's true, yeah, maybe, maybe it's actually a no. Right? Like, that's what it is. The reason you like a movie or a show, if you really stop and think about it, is because of the characters. You ever been bummed out when a character, like, dies or leaves a show? Or, or you're like, they should have ended up with it. It's, you get invested with them as people. Right? That's what, that's thousands of years old when it comes to drama. And we're saying here, power fantasy is no different. Doesn't get to break that rule. You gotta be able to relate to the guy in this case. Maybe. That's an argument. We would have to prove that. We have to talk about that looking at the movie. Okay? To play devil's advocate, because a lot of the time that's my job, all I can think, and again, it's not on the page, so I'm, I'm filling this in. All I can think is he's really digging into the fantasy aspect. You see what I'm saying? Like, power, sure, but fantasy. What do I know about fantasy? Not realistic. And that's fair, because think about it this way. If, if you want to pretend that you are some like superpowered person, there's different takes on this. I'll put it to you this way. Some people are Superman fans. Other people are Batman fans. That's a real split. I'm a Batman fan. But if you're a Superman fan, you're sitting there thinking, why? Superman would fuck that guy up. Why wouldn't you? That's this. If given the choice between who I'm going to fantasize to be, like if Neo meets Rocky or John McClane in The Matrix, good luck. Right? This guy, he's Superman. But the Batman in me says, ah, the dude's been through shit. He's got to work hard. Like, he's just a guy with a bunch of gadgets and a weird outfit. Like, I. I can root for him, right? I can feel for him. Superman is hard. But that is a thing. This question of what's worth fantasizing over. Do you see what I'm saying? So the point I'm making here, you never have an argument that's worth making if it's one-sided, okay? And to me, that's the best defense I can think of of not realistic for yes, is that if we really were pushed, like what's your fantasy? I'm not, I'm not, like if I fantasize about my perfect afternoon, I don't know if it's gonna be at the house with my kids. It'd be somewhere quiet, <laughs> you know? That's not realistic. Okay. The other point I wanna make, and then we're gonna go through a couple more of these. Uh, what time is that? <coughs> I don't think it's lost because I, I don't know if you guys do, I depend on that thing for the time. So when I do this, I'm, I'm fucking totally lost in terms of time. Anyway, to me, we gotta think about this paper again as an in-class essay. To me, this is at least a paragraph, this idea. And I'm not saying like, when I say paragraph, I mean again, you have intro, paragraph one, paragraph two. And that's all the time you have. Okay, so I mean, if we were writing this paper, I mean, most of us are over here. I do think that's easier to talk about, but I do think you could do this. But for our purposes, say that at least part of our argument is a no. Okay, and our first paragraph is going to be all right. More on that in a minute. We need to talk about another one of these ideas. Which one do you guys want to try? 
Which one do you feel like you could talk about? Like the fact that he's the chosen one, what that has to do with the power of fantasy, the fact that he doubts himself, or the fact that he doesn't really do much to acquire his power. Which one? He doesn't do much. He doesn't do much. Let's talk about that. All right. Now, again, it seems like the tone, anyway, of this thing, it seems like he's saying that's also part of his power fantasy, right? And that it works well. My question to you would be do you agree with that? I'm not, I will not ask the next person to offer an answer to explain. Just a yes or a no, what do you think? Giving you an out. I thought somebody would jump at that. Does this help or hinder the Matrix's sort of goal, the way we're spinning it, of, of being a power fantasy? The fact that Neo doesn't really do anything to acquire his power. You say it helps. Why? Because if we're saying that it does, like, you know, and if we're saying it's not related, uh -huh. it helps by saying that in the real world, it works for stuff. You're... Right? Again, if you were to fantasize about, I mean, this, we're talking about power here, but it, pick your fantasy, it doesn't matter. It usually doesn't come with work involved. Sometimes it could. I mean, I, you know, I'm not gonna take it from you. But again, if press and like the, the sort of highest fantasy you can imagine, a lot of it starts with, I just want that shit handed to me, dog. I'm not trying to, I'm not putting in reps. Like, what are you, what are you talking about right now, right? Yeah. Same argument, I think, for sure. Interesting now to me, again, I agree with that. Would anybody put this on this side? That's an honest question. I'm just wondering. Does it, could you argue, damage the Matrix's claim to power fantasy? The fact that Neo just kind of plugs in. You see Trinity do it at 1.2, but I can like, apply that now. Like, it's kind of, it's a little bit like, I missed the montage. What do you think? And by the way, to, to, to put that point home, we get a montage in The Matrix. Does anybody remember it? Of Neo's training? It's him going, just different shots of that. That's the montage. Kind of underwhelming, right? Did that damage the power fantasy? Could you argue? Nobody. I thought somebody would take me up on that. Okay, I'll try. And so everybody thinks this? That is fine. I think you guys, I, I think half the time you guys are worried I'm trying to trick you. I'm not trying to trick you. Okay. Well, again, devil's advocate. I'll put it over here. Let's see. Again, I, I'm thinking of that scene in particular. He's just like twitching in his chair. Like he's a machine. Especially when you look at that scene on its own. And no, that's not necessarily completely fair to the film because you don't watch any film like that. But it's almost like if you, if you watched the movie two or three times, which by the way I do with movies that we're gonna talk about, stuff like that does kind of stand out on a second or third viewing. It's kind of lame. Do you have something to say? I was gonna say, I was, like, the one I said last class, I said how I related more to like the Rocky film and stuff. So yeah. Like, and like this kind of goes with that because you actually like see him put in like the work and like the effort at least like a little bit more. Yeah. And with this, like you said, it's just he just kind of plugs in. So like I kind of relate more, more like feel more connected with Rocky and stuff. Why do you think that is? We did talk about, but we never caught. <clears throat> I'm fine with that line of argument, but we have to try to answer why it works that way. And I think a lot of you agreed with that. Why is that? That when you see Rocky first starting out, sad music, he guzzles eggs and 
goes out in the morning and, he's, and then by the end he's like fuck he just he, I think he takes him a couple stairs at a time and like dancing and why does that montage for the most part work right like it moves you in a way I think I feel like it's because we actually saw him at his lowest the progression yeah we saw him work through the phases to get to where he was trying to go and get his ultimate goal uh -huh. instead of just being basically like swooped up and just say hey, yeah this is all yours now so it's okay so it's almost like in math class the same reason your math teacher wants you to show your work not because they're not happy you got the answer right but like you cheated me man like i need to see you can do that take the steps yeah well it's all mm -hmm. all right hold on so Basically, if we're on the no side, in a way, we're saying that maybe it's too fantastic. You see what I mean? Like it's it's, and it, this feels stupid to say about a movie like The Matrix, but like it's not believable. And it's like, well, yeah, but. Even in a movie like The Matrix, there can be believable elements. So, for instance, when that guy betrays everybody, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I knew that guy was a snake type of thing, right? He's so creepy. You're like, I, I know. The whole time he's talking to Trinity and he's like in, literally in her face and she can't do anything, I'm just like, I went to high school with fucking guys like that. Creepy bastard. Like, it, that's unfortunate. That feels realistic. That's one of the most realistic, maybe, parts of the movie. Is when he's like creeping on her. So it is possible. And I only say that to say this does seem only, like maybe too far in terms of how powerful, how fantastic it could be, right? Uh, there's a phrase we have, it's called jumping the shark. Is anyone familiar with this? No, okay. Well, it's from Happy Days. I didn't watch it either. Don't pigeonhole me like that. But it's an idea in TV and also movies that like, if the show or the, or the movie takes something too far, all of a sudden it loses the audience. I wish I could give you an example. I don't know, I'll ask, can you guys think of anything like from a show or a movie you've seen where like, a character just did something totally out of character or something that was just too fantastic is the only way I can think to describe it. And that kind of took you out of the movie a little bit. They, they do what with a rocket? You like, like there's a rocket or something, and you like get them to jeep, and you like push them to the other way. A missile? Yeah. yeah. Something like that really matters. Okay. That's pretty stupid. So he catches, he catches up to a missile in a jeep? No, it's like passes in. Oh, okay. Reaches out. I guess that's slightly more realistic. And like pushes it the other way. That's pretty stupid, yeah. Or like in the commercial when they're doing, he catches a car. Catches a car? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so so here, yeah, so moments like that, like it's a, I mean, for me anyway, those particular, like I laugh at them, like it's almost, but whatever your reaction, it takes you out of the movie, right? You, I would argue one of the most important elements of a fantasy, power fantasy, whatever kind of fantasy, is the suspension of disbelief. You gotta be able to believe the thing. Moments like this, Maybe moments again where he's like, he's a machine. He's just... Kind of takes you out of that belief. And also you're just watching this dude twitch in a chair. It's kind of, again, the word I keep coming to is lame, but like it just doesn't stir you in the way like Rocky going up the stairs and John McClane running through glass, you know, like that, that, that moves you. It does. All right. So what would we do with any of this? Well, Number one, the point I want to make, again, well, actually, I've, I've only implied this, I haven't made it yet. I think we have too much. For our purposes, we need an introduction. We get two paragraphs. What we have here, like right in front of you, what the student wrote, is like a rough draft of an introduction. That's what most of you turned in, by the way, which is fine. That's what I was hoping for. But you go back and look at that, and you see what your ideas actually are. And again, I would do it like this. 
What am I really focusing on? What, what specific elements or ideas am I focusing on when it comes to answering this question? Lack of realism, chosen one, he doubts himself, he doesn't do anything. At most, I could probably talk about two of those. If I'm this student, I might pick those because we talked about them as a class. But they may have really cool ideas about the other ones. I just crossed them out because we, we didn't do those. But I would say probably pick two. And then in each paragraph, you're going to prove whatever argument you happen to decide upon. If it was a hard yes, because both of these really nicely line up in that one, great. It could be a yes, no, by the way. Say, for instance, if you're this student, you happen to think it's not realistic, which means we can't relate to it, which means you can't pull for the character. And that kind of makes it hard to feel like you're him. Right? That makes sense. But on the other hand, the fact that he doesn't do work, you can get behind that. Like, I don't relate to him, but I definitely relate to his lack of work. I do that all day. So you're somewhere in the middle. You're basically saying, it's not a perfect power fantasy, but there are elements that work. My first paragraph would be, what doesn't work? My second paragraph would be, what works, right? So it doesn't have to be a hard yes, a hard no. It could be in between as well. Questions at this stage? Okay. I always worry I lay too much at your feet. I want to tell you one more thing. Very much there. Okay, cool. The other thing I would point out to you, these body paragraphs still, for the most part, need to work like the body paragraphs we've talked about, okay? So you may feel, for instance, I mean, let's, kinda, let's do it this way. We'll go no for not realistic, but we'll go yes for work if we can. So is there uh, an element of the film, like a, a scene or more specifically a part of a scene we could point to and say that's not realistic and it damages the power fantasy in this film. Makes it harder to buy, basically. Is there anything from the movie you can think of? I think of a couple. Because again, we're basically like he's too powerful or it's too over the top, you know, would be a way to talk about it. Like it's like nudging a missile out of a Jeep. Is there anything like that? It just takes you out of the movie. I think the like the what now? The, um, what's the call it? The John Gato thing? The ghetto? No, like the John Gato or something. I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know. Which I guy? What's he look like? I know. I think it's like an idea. Like okay. Oh, John Woo. Oh, yeah, John Woo. The, the slow-mo stuff they're doing with all yeah. the... Sure, sure, sure. The, the bullet. Yeah, bullet time, they call it, and, mm -hmm. uh, and all the flips and the slow-mo kung fu, all that stuff. Okay. I mean, one of the best scenes for that, for me, is when they, they go to break Morpheus out. And they, get, they enter the office building, and one of my favorite parts, because I, I always remind myself that these are innocent bystanders, is when Trinity like kicks a dude or oh she kicks a shotgun out of a dude's hand it flies behind him and she blasts him I was like that dude probably had a family um but yeah I mean it looks cool right it looks pretty fucking, fucking awesome right before she did a flip off the wall and like for sure yeah John Woo uh it's very these are from like 80s movies that we didn't have time to talk about because it's own subgenre basically uh, a lot about uh, a lot of movies out of Hong Kong. You guys ever heard of Chow Yun Fat? Don't worry about it. He's a pretty big deal. Uh, he's in movies like that. Like the most famous one is probably Hard Boiled. If you've ever seen in a movie like slow motion pigeons or like a lot of shit breaking, that's John, that's people that grew up watching John Woo. That's what that is. He had a lot of that. Okay. Anyway, absolutely, they're inspired by those movies. What's not realistic about that? I know that goes without saying, but humor me. How might that, you could argue, take you out of the power fantasy? All the, the flipping and the slow motion and the... Again, even the example I gave where she kicks the shotgun out of the dude's hand and it just 
like cartwheels over his shoulder and she blasts him. How might that take you out of the movie? We're going to argue. Because I'm just like, that's really cool. Power fantasy, right? Like, how would you argue against that? Me personally, I, I'd never be able to do that. <laughs> I don't think anyone would. I'm not cooking anymore. Well, supposing you were able to just run up and kick the shotgun out of a dude's hand, which doesn't feel like the best idea. It's the, it's, isn't it the cartwheeling over his shoulder? Like, disarming him is one thing. They're, they are flipping and whatnot. Like, they're pretty, obviously, gifted. But it perfectly rolling over his shoulder and her catch, like, it, it's too much, we could argue. Right? It's the equivalent of that damn missile. At some point, it's like, man, maybe they disarm it somehow, like, with a frequency, like, you know, like, but to just go, uh, like that, it's the same kind of thing. That's this paragraph, if we're arguing no, right? We focus on a scene, more importantly, a specific moment in a scene. We talk about how it works on its own, and then we talk about how it helps prove our argument. We can't relate to that. No one in the theater is like, I had to do that if I was working. No, no. Silly. Okay, cool. That's what paragraph. The other one. And again, I'm gonna force you guys to do no yes. So this one, now we have to argue. I can't relate to that. But I can get behind this. Comes to a power fantasy. And really the best scene has gotta be either him just plugging in and going, or I think his fight with Morpheus, because that's him training too, and that—that's the best look we get at. Like you, you almost see him progress in the fight. You know, he gets better just in a really, really, really short time. So we kind of, but in the grand scheme, like if you're going to compare this kind of work to Rocky. Like, you get the sense he's doing that for weeks and weeks. It's still pretty quick. How can we talk about, like, that adds to the power of fantasy. That, that helps in some way, do you think? Either one. I don't, you, you, whoever answers can pick. But the fight with Morpheus or the, the Twitch chair. Well, um, I think the fight with Morpheus. If I could do that, I would. Talk about it. Which one? Just get kind of plug in and upload how it gets on. That's kind of cool. This is cool. It, what we're kind of saying is, in the hypothetical paper we've laid out for this student, who's not even here, by the way, which is a bummer. I feel like most of you don't watch the videos. Anyway, we're kind of saying, yeah, on the one hand, can't really relate to this guy as a character because to be honest he's barely a character and when we see his powers or even the powers of his friends who we're led to believe are not as powerful it's oftentimes a bit much we'll say and you talk about that second paragraph though you point out well all that said it is pretty cool really i mean that's appealing that's why you see old men driving badass cars it's not realistic for them to be driving those cars in terms of controlling them, in terms of using them, how they're meant to be used. I'm not trying to call out old people. I'm just, that's how it, like when you get stuck behind a guy in a vet who's doing like 30, you're like, why do you have this car? Because <laughs> it's fucking cool. That's all, not realistic. Oftentimes, weirdly, and this could factor in, the least realistic things are the coolest. Maybe that's what we fantasize about most, you know? That old guy wanted that Camaro, that vet, whatever, for a long time. He finally got it. He's too old for it. Fuck it. I'm getting it. Right? Same kind of thing here. Why does it work as a power fantasy? Because that's what we want. Yeah. For sure. That's this paragraph. Right? 
the way I always talk to you guys about papers is the way I talk to all my classes about papers. I would take this introduction, whatever you are for the discussion board, and some of you didn't attempt the question we laid out in class, and that there's reasons for that that's totally on me, not on you, so that's fine. Worst case scenario, I say, if you didn't do that, take on this question now, right? Just write a paragraph. Don't worry about it being a body paragraph. Don't just write a paragraph. Answering the question, does the matrix do a good job as a power fantasy? Yes or no, right? That's all you gotta do. And from there, again, go back, pick out what you seem to be focused on. Pick two that work the best for you, whatever you're feeling on them is, right? Then you answer the why question. Most of you, even if you answered the discussion board like we talked about in class, didn't give me a lot of why. That's argument. If you don't have a why, you don't have an argument. And then from there, you can kind of, we'll talk about thesis next time, but from there, you can figure out your body paragraphs. From there, you're, you're damn near done, right? Does that make sense?